Production Technology of Orchids Hello everyone, I am Alina Sorvardi from BTech Biotechnology 2nd SEM and today the topic of my presentation is Production Technology of Orchids but before starting I would like to thank our course instructor Dr. Prashant Bakshi for such a grand opportunity. Following are the contents of my presentation. What are orchids? The family Orchidaceae is one of the three largest families of flowering plants. Orchids are monocots. They exhibit a wide range of diversity in form, size, color and texture of flowers beyond the imagination of human mind. They are of immense horticultural importance and play a very useful role to balance the forest ecosystem. Major Characteristics of Family Orchidaceae most orchids have only one stamen. Stamens and pistil are partly or completely united, which is called gynostamium or column. The median petal opposite to the fertile stamen is often greatly modified and called the labellum or lip. A modified stigma called a rostellum plays a role in transfer of pollens. Pollen grains are in masses called pollinia. Here is a picture of the orchid flower showing its various parts. Orchids can be divided into two basic growth types. Monopodial, one-footed, have a main stem which continues to grow year after, for example, Phalaenopsis, Renonthera, Vanda, etc. Sympodial, many-footed. The plant produces a series of adjustment shoots which grow to a certain size, bloom, then stop growing to be replaced by the next growth. Example, Cattleya cymbidium. Orchids can be divided into four types according to growing condition. Grouping. Epiphytes are air plants which grow on trees. Lithophytes are the rock growers that cling to the surfaces of rocks. Saprophytes are those that grow in mulch, often on the forest floor, terrestrials which anchor themselves in soil or sand. As most orchids are epiphytes, they can be ground in tree bark, crumbled charcoal, pebbles or on wooden or cork plaques. Planting Terminal cuttings of monopodial orchids are planted loosely on old coconut husk at a spacing of 30 cm between plants and 45 cm between rows in long beds. There can be two or three rows in a bed. Harvest Dendrobium flower fully matures only three or four days after it opens. Flowers are harvested when they are fully open as the flower cuts prior to their maturity will wilt before reaching the wholesaler. Immediately after harvest, the lower 0.75 cm of the peduncle is cut off and the flower is inserted into a fresh tube of water containing preservative, harvesting the spike when 75% of the flowers are open and remaining buds are unopened. Yield 8 to 10 spikes per plant per year. Post harvest handling. Pulsing. 8 HQC 500 ppm plus sucrose 5% for 12 hours holding solution silver nitrate 25 ppm plus 8 HQC 400 ppm plus sucrose 5% wrapping material 50 gauge polythene with base of spikes dipped in 8 HQC 25 ppm orchids and its uses orchids as medicine in China, dendrobium is used as a source of tonic, astringent, analgesic, and anti-inflammatory substances. In India, in the preparation of chavanprash, four orchids are used. Round the world, it is used to care rheumatism, malaria, tuberculosis, cuts, wounds and burn injuries, asthma, and several other ailments. Orchids as spice, flavoring agent, and food. The use of vanilla, vanillin, extracted from the pods of vanilla planifolia, is used as a flavoring agent in chocolates and ice creams. The popular beverage called faham or Madagascar tea on the islands of Madagascar is prepared from the orchid Jumelia fragrance. 
In North America, bulbs and tubers of several species of orchids were consumed. Other uses Pendants, earrings or pins are made by casting a metal mold on it and then by gold or silver plating the same is common in Singapore. Feyus tankavilia is for making fishing nets in India. Some orchid species are used as colouring agent. Rinko stylus retusa is used to adorn young ladies' hair in northeastern India. Some varieties are Sonia 17, Sonia 28, Emma White, Sakura Pink. Some of the common orchid species Cattleyas. Cattleyas were discovered in 1824 when William Cattley received a sickly plant of Cattleya labiata used as packing material in a shipment of orchids and nursed it back to health. When it bloomed, it created quite a stir. Cattleyas are still among the most popular types of orchids today. Cymbidium Cymbidium orchids are among the showiest types of orchids, with sprays with numerous large colorful flowers, usually in winter. These plants are quite popular and some have been cultivated for thousands of years. They need cool temperatures to initiate blooming. Dendrobium Dendrobium is a large genus with about 1200 species. They tend to like bright light but most other care requirements have exceptions. They are one of the most popular types of orchids and many are quite beautiful. Lady slipper orchids. Lady slipper orchids is a catch all term for a few types of orchids, typically referring to any plant in tribe Cepripediodi, which includes Sagendra, Cepripedium, Fafiopedilum, Phragmipedium, Maxipedium, and Selenipedium. These types of orchids all have a slipper, a pouch shaped labellum in which their pollinating insects get stuck. Paphiopedilums. Paphiopedilums are slipper orchids that come from Southeast Asia. Many have attractive mottled leaves too. They grow well in relatively low light, which can be convenient for indoor orchid. They are quite easy to grow. Phaeus. Phaeus, including Phaeus and Carville, the nun orchid, is a genus of terrestrial orchids. They are quite easy to grow and have numerous, usually 10 to 20 per stem, large and showy flowers with tube-like labellums. Phalaenopsis Phalaenopsis, the moth orchid, is one of the most commonly available and easiest to grow orchid genera. It is a specially good choice for beginners to orchid growing. They have large showy flowers that come in a wide variety of colors. Most species have several flowers per stem, but some have more and others have as few as one or two. There are a great many hybrid varieties on the market. Vandas Vandas are beautiful orchids that like lots of light and warm temperatures. They tend to have large, round flowers. Most other types of orchids in the Vanda Alliance like similar care. How to care for orchids Indirect sunlight is ideal for orchid. Seedlings require less sunlight than adult plant. Very poor light tends to produce weak plants and retards flowering. Optimum requirement varies between species to species. Cypropedium and Phalaenopsis requires only 200 to 300 foot candles. Vanda and Aranda best under 800 foot candles. Growers have used shade nets in 35% to 85% shade percentage to grow orchids of different genera. Orchids in nature grow pre-treated from the tropical sun by the shades of trees. Under controlled conditions, the orchids can be grown in orchid house. How to manure orchids? In nature, orchids obtain their supply of inorganic nutrients like calcium, magnesium, iron, potassium, nitrogen and traces of manganese, boron, copper, zinc, etc. from the tree on which they are growing and also from atmosphere and decaying vegetables and droppings of birds. 
Under controlled conditions, they have to be supplied these major and minor nutrients. Solid and liquid fertilizer mixtures are available in the market. Liquid fertilizers are much more quickly absorbed and can be applied more frequently. Usage of fertilizer depends on stage of growth. During vegetative growth, large quantities of nitrogen are required, while during flowering, nitrogen should be reduced and amount of phosphate increased. NPK 20 is to 20 is to 20 or 18 is to 18 is to 18 is good during vegetative growth. NPK 10 is to 20 is to 30 or 7 is to 12 is to 40 is good during flowering stage. In general, pH of the nutrient solution should be slightly acidic or neutral but not alkaline. Fertilizer should be made on sunny days during 8 am to 10.30 am for better absorption. How to propagate orchids? Orchids, like other horticultural crops, may be propagated either sexually or asexually. Since most of the commercial orchids are highly heterozygous, they are not raised through seed and are propagated through vegetative means to get true to type plants. Propagation methods Cutting, offshoots and cages, aerial shoots, seed, tissue culture. Cutting Orchid like Arides, Arachnic, Epidendrum, Renanthera, Phalaenopsis, Vanda, and Dendrobium can be propagated by cutting. Cut ends should be treated with fungicides to prevent rotting. Most of the sympodial orchids like Coelogyne, Cattleya, Dendrobium, and Cymbidium are propagated through this method. Offshoots and cages. In some monopodium orchids like Ascosenda and Phalaenopsis, cages or offshoots emerge frequently on the main stem. Induction of cages can also be induced through the use of cytokinins, which force the dormant bud to develop into cages. Aerial shoots. Most of the dendrobium produce aerial shoots or bulbs on old back bulbs devoid of leaves usually arise on the upper part of the back bulbs in general like goodyear rhizomes gives off special lateral branches which turn up and produce aerial shoots seed orchids produce seed pods with literally hundreds of thousands of seed that are released and scattered by the wind 1300 to 4 lakh color may be white cream pale green, reddish orange or dark brown and have very diverse shapes. Orchid seeds must establish a symbiotic relationship with the special fungus to survive its first year of life. The fungi gathers water and minerals for itself and the seedling and the seedling shares its sugars from photosynthesis with the fungus. Only one or two orchid seeds will ever germinate and survive on that perfect crevice or depression that is both moist and has the fungus present. Its chances to survive in the wild long enough to bloom are slim. Tissue Culture Tissue culture technique were applied to orchids in 1960. Tissue culture technique is highly successful to get virus-free plants. Today, tissue culture is preferred for commercial propagation of orchids. Both liquid and solid media are used for the orchid tissue culture. The explants, after being isolated from the shoots, are cultured in or on the desired medium, under sterile conditions, offer to produce clones of a plant. Diseases and Pests Various fungicides like Captain, Dicin, Agrocin and Saracin are effective against fungal and bacterial diseases. In case of viral diseases, plants should be isolated to prevent spreading. The most commonly reported insects pests are thrips, aphids, spider mite, soft scale, mealybugs, orchid weevil, snails and slugs. Can be controlled by insecticides like parathine, malathion, BHC, aldrin, dildrin, etc. Metal dehyde has proved to be very effective in killing slugs and snails. Even bear can be used as a bait. 
Breeding of new varieties. Some of the important intergenic hybrids are given here. Thank you so much everyone for watching this video. I hope you liked it.